Hey, my name is Jeff Kramer, and welcome back to Rainforest Expeditions. There's no better tool for finding out what's out there than a camera trap. Check this out. So what a camera trap is, it's a camera that's connected to an infrared beam. Every time an animal breaks the infrared beam, the camera takes a picture. Camera traps are really cool because you can leave them in the jungle for months at a time, and they'll take a picture of everything that walks by. So what I'll do today is I'll show you my camera trap setup, how it all works, and I'll show you some cool pictures I took recently. So stick around, check it out. So what I'll do right now is I'll give you an overview of how the camera trap setup works out here in the jungle. So what I have here is the infrared beam going across the trail. Like I said before, anytime an animal comes by and breaks a beam, it's going to send a signal to the camera and the camera will take a picture. So the infrared sensor here is connected to the camera with a cable. And the camera is sitting here with a wide angle lens. It will take a wide angle of anything in the general area. And I have a flash unit up here and a flash unit over there. And I'll put some nice even lighting onto the subject and make for a really nice photo. So what I'll do right now is I'll take you down here. I'll show you some of the details on how the camera trap works. And then we'll look at some pictures. So here's the infrared sensor that I'm using. It's a Trailmaster TM1550. Now, it's completely weatherproof and it uses something called Active IR. Active IR is a two-part system that uses this infrared transmitter to transmit a beam across the trail. And only when that beam is broken by an animal will the camera take a picture. Now, there are other IR sensors on the market and those use something called Passive IR. Now, Passive IR uses a combination of heat and motion to trigger the camera. I like the active IR sensors better because they reduce the amount of false triggers that the sensor has. Now, how I have this set up is I just put a piece of bamboo into the ground and then I duct tape the sensor to it. There's no magic involved, it's a really simple setup. And I have this set up to where every time an animal walks by, it'll take three pictures. Now, it's also cabled, and I think having a cable is really good because it reduces the amount of errors that the system has. Every time you start playing around the wireless and fancy stuff out in the jungle, things start to break. So I think that the more solid connections that a system has, the better. So here's the camera that I'm using. It's a Canon 6D with a 28 to 80 millimeter kit lens on it. Now you can see I have a plastic bag on here to protect it from the rain. But I'll take that plastic bag off so you guys can see what's going on. So here's the camera and here's the lens. I have that lens set to 28 millimeters, so it's going to take a nice wide angle field of view and it will capture any animal that walks through the general area. Now you can also see that I have this lens duct tape. Now the reason I have it duct tape is because sometimes when I'm putting the plastic bag on and messing around with the camera, that focus will tend to shift. So I just put the duct tape on there to keep the focus in place. Now how I focus in the first place is where that infrared beam crosses the path. I just put a stick in the middle of it and I use live view to focus on the stick and I just took the stick away. So when the animal breaks the beam, it's going to take a perfectly in focus shot. Now, something I like about this camera is it has a silent shooting mode. Now, it's not a completely silent shooting mode, but it's really quiet. Check it out. So that's really important so you don't disturb the animal when its picture is being taken. Another thing I like about this camera is that it has a sleep mode. So after one minute, the camera goes to sleep and it doesn't wake back up until an animal breaks the beam. Now it's really important to have a sleep mode because it helps conserve the battery. Another thing that I have here is right on the top, this is the flash cable that goes up to the two flashes I have set up. Like I said before, I like everything cabled because it, you know, you don't get a lot of errors in the system. Now another thing I'm doing here is I'm shooting in RAW and I'm shooting onto a 64 gigabyte card so that you know you can take lots of pictures and you won't have to change the card very often. Now I mentioned I'm using this plastic bag because it will waterproof the camera. But the thing is with the plastic bag, it waterproofs it, but it doesn't termite proof it. Check this out. Look at this camera. I set this thing up in the jungle for about a month and I came back and it was completely covered in termites. And they pretty much destroyed the entire camera. There's just stuff everywhere. And even though I had a lens on, they found a way to get behind the lens. They got to the sensor, they got to the mirror, they completely destroyed the camera. So what a lot of people do is they use a modified Pelican case for their camera trap setups. And I'll be doing that in the future. So the final part to a camera trap setup are the flashes. I have this flash in a waterproof Tupperware container and I duct taped it to a tree. It's a really simple way for hanging up flashes when you're out in the jungle. 
I have a flash unit here and I'll show it to you real quick. This is a Nikon SB28 flash unit and it's really, really cool. And what makes it so cool is it has a standby mode. And that standby mode puts the flash to sleep and it doesn't wake up until the picture is ready to be taken. That saves on tons of battery power and these flashes last a really, really long time. Now normally these take four AA batteries, but I have a battery pack right here. It takes eight AA batteries, so it's going to last twice as long. Now another thing that I use to extend the life of the battery is I put these into 1 16th power mode. So every time a picture is to be taken, it puts out a really low power flash and saves on battery. Now the flash isn't going to be very bright, but what I do is I just increase the ISO on the camera a little bit and the picture comes out fine. Now I mentioned I have one flash unit here and this flash unit is placed on the other tree and that's going to allow for nice even lighting and soft shadows and it's going to make for a really nice picture. So people ask me how I found the spot to set up this camera trap and it's really simple. I'm always out here in the jungle walking around and I happen to come across this game trail. So here's the game trail right here and it's coming up from the river and now when the animals come up from the river they usually go down this way and walk down this trail. So there's a lot of different animals that use this trail. There are peccaries, there are tapir, there's puma, jaguars, all sorts of stuff is out here using these trails. So by setting up the camera trap right there, we have a really good chance of getting some nice shots. So I'm at home now. I left the camera out in the jungle for about four weeks and we got some really cool shots of a lot of rare animals. I thought a good way to start off would be to show you how I photoshopped some of the photos and then just keep on going and show you all the rest of the pictures. Check it out. So if you look at these pictures, you'll notice that you don't see the camera trap in there. And that's because I've taken it out in Photoshop. So here's a really simple way to do that. What you can do is you come up here, grab the lasso tool, you just hit the L key, come to the camera trap and just make a really rough selection around it. Once it's selected, hit delete. Make sure this says content to wear. Hit OK. Boom. Should take it out. Come back here. Using just a rough selection again. I'll be sure to get the shadow in this one. I'll be sure to get the cord. And come back up around. Get this. Hit delete. Content to wear. Boom. That's done. So it's really easy to take out the camera traps. Another thing you can do, like see this stick here? I don't want this stick in there. Just crop it out. And you just hold the shift key to maintain the aspect ratio. You got it. It's that easy to do. The first picture is of a puma. Puma are really rare animals to see since they're most active at dawn and dusk and rarely emerge during the day. It seems like this puma was walking through the jungle one evening minding his own business when the camera took his picture. When he heard the sound of the shutter, he turned towards the sound and right then the camera took another picture. Now pumas are the fourth largest cat in the world. They're agile and powerful predators and this picture really shows it. Just look at all the muscle on his legs and shoulders. Right after that picture was taken, Mr. Puma walked right up to the camera and looked at it with a really sad face and then walked off. I have no idea why it looks so sad. This picture is of a margai. Of all the felines, the margai is most adapted for a true arboreal life. It's the only cat to possess the ability to rotate its hind legs 180 degrees, enabling it to run head first down trees like squirrels. It can also hang from a branch by one hind foot. Margai are difficult to photograph because they're nocturnal and spend most of their lives in the trees, but sometimes come down to hunt rats and other small mammals, which is what this one might have been doing when he triggered the camera trap. This picture is of an ocelot. These mini jaguars are an awesome find. Like the margai, ocelots are nocturnal wildcats and are very difficult to find and photograph. Ocelots look similar to margai, but have a larger body size, shorter tail, and smaller eyes. The Mochi people of ancient Peru used to revere the cats and often portrayed them in their art. Giant armadillos are another super rare find, with only two or three per every hundred square kilometers. Meaning little armored one in Spanish, the necks and backs of giant armadillos are covered in flexible armor consisting of movable bands of horn and bone. 
Giant armadillos are big animals and can reach over 5 feet long and weigh around 70 pounds. A strange but true fact is that giant armadillos have 80 to 100 teeth, which is more than any other mammal. Although their main diet is termites and ants, they can use these teeth to crush larger foods such as spiders, snakes, and plants. Weighing anywhere between 3 and 600 pounds, tapirs are the largest mammals in the Amazon. Their large size doesn't mean they're easy to find though. Tapirs are notoriously difficult to see with one taper researcher spending over a year in the field only to catch a glimpse of just one in person. These odd looking creatures look similar to a horse but are actually more closely related to the rhinoceros. They also make a good meal for hungry jaguars and puma. Peccaries are a type of wild pig that can be found in the rainforest of Tambopata. They seem to be everywhere. It's a good thing because this large pig quickly disappears from areas subject to hunting and deforestation. They seem to require large unbroken tracts of lowland rainforest such as those of the Tambopata region. Seeing a peccary here is a good sign and means that this part of the rainforest is still healthy. So I'd say that the last animal that the camera trap captured are the termites. I asked my friend Aaron, who's an entomologist, about what the termites were, and this is what he had to say. Aaron said that the termites seem to be a species of nostoterms. The nous termite is widely distributed all over the tropical regions. They get their name because the soldier cast possesses a frontal projection called the nausis. In some of these species, a soldier cast has their heads modified to spew a noxious, sticky liquid when under attack by anteaters. I also asked Lucas Carnahan, a termite specialist, about why they were attracted to my camera. He said they weren't particularly drawn to the camera so much as that I just happened to put the camera on the ground in a place with a lot of active termites. So the termites did what they did best and put muddy termite poo tunnels all over it while exploring the new terrain. Hey, thanks for watching. I hope you guys really enjoyed the video. You know, we're always out here in the jungle finding cool new things, so be sure to subscribe to our channel to keep up to date on all the latest discoveries. You can also follow me on Twitter at jkramerphoto, and you can also follow me on Instagram where I'm always posting pictures from out here in the rainforest. Again, I hope you guys really enjoyed the video and hope to see you all next time. See you later. This video was sponsored by PeruNature.com. If you're looking to make your own adventures in the Amazon while staying at the best jungle lodges, follow the links and check out their website. That's PeruNature.com. Thanks for watching.